Temple Mount in Jerusalem is the hottest piece of real estate in the entire world, and the eyes of everyone look towards this city. There's a theory that's circulated the globe in recent years and has now reached millions of people that places the location of the Jewish temple in an entirely different spot. This is vitally important to both Jews and Christians, the location literally of God's presence on earth. This is in doubt right now. We're gonna dig into this, we're gonna find out the truth, and we're gonna share it with you right here at the Israel Guys. I believe that it is the place that you're gonna see the hand of God and we need to see the hand of God right now. But when I'm an archaeologist, I'm TikToking with the rules, with the, with the finding, with the reality. I'm not dreaming. I'm not saying maybe yes or not. So what is truth in life? It's, it's a very hard thing to garner. Take everything I say and put it under the lens of Scripture. One quick note is that we do not claim to be archaeologists or historians. But when it comes to this topic, we have a lot of passion, especially for the truth. And more than that, we want to bring you the real story, all the facts and details in an easy and understandable way. But we do know a lot of those historians and scholars and archaeologists, and we're also going to introduce you to them. One of the most important things that we've got to start right from the beginning is, is that the Temple Mount has loads of Jewish history, thousands of years. So we're not gonna discard that. We're, that's a part of the story for sure. So let's throw off the anti-Israel rhetoric, the propagandas that say Israel has nothing to do with this. It has a major part to do with it. And we're gonna dig into the Jewish side. The alternate location theory places the temple not in the traditional site, but down below to the south in the city of David. I'm gonna to propose tonight that the Temple of Solomon and Herod was not built on the Temple Mount that we have today. You see the Jews praying at the Western Wailing Wall? I think that's the walls of the Roman fortress Antonio. When the alternate location theory talks about the Antonia Fortress problem, there's basically two aspects to this. First is the size of the Roman garrison that would have been stationed at Antonia. When Josephus the historian mentions the Roman garrison, he uses a Greek word that this theory translates as legion, a legion with 6,000 soldiers. And the theory also says that there would have been 4,000 more people that were attachments to the soldiers. That's 10,000 people. So what is the fort? What is that big high-walled fort looking thing up there? It's a fort. Uh, Josephus says during his time period that there were 6,000 men there, which is a legion, which required 4,000 support personnel. So you have a huge structure up there. And what they say is that there's no area big enough in Jerusalem to hold 10,000 men, except for the Temple Mount Plaza, which is 35 acres, and which is kind of similar in size to some of the other Roman forts in the area. Now, the second thing that they talk about is that history tells us that the Antonia Fortress overlooked the temple. We even see this in the New Testament. Now, if you believe that the temple is in the city of David, which is below the southern part of the traditional site of the Temple Mount, this theory makes perfect sense. It sounds really good, and we have a big problem here. Or do we? because there's some holes in this theory, and we're gonna talk about that. So we're going up to the Temple Mount Plaza now, the traditional site. We're gonna check out the Antonio Fortress. Is there any remains? We're also gonna read a few quotes, old quotes from Josephus. Josephus talks about this place incessantly. We have so many quotes from all over, so we should be able to find a little bit of evidence one side or the other. Just gotta go a little bit more north and we're gonna run right into that corner, right? Okay guys, so this is pretty incredible. We're right here at the northwest corner of the Temple Mount Plaza. Again, this is the traditional site. And what do we find? Well, according to Josephus here, he mentions that there's a huge rock, a bedrock, that's underneath the plaza and then Antonia Fortress is built on top of this rock. So, as we see right now, in this northwest corner, what do you know? There's a huge bedrock, massive bedrock, that extends this entire northwest corner. We can see it right here for ourselves. Um, and according to Josephus' writings, it's very clear, the Antonia Fortress was just built just on top of this bedrock. 
Now as to the Tower of Antonia, it was situated at the corner of two cloisters of the Court of the Temple, okay? So the Court of the Temple, traditional has this as the Court of the Temple, so it's sitting next to there. Of that on the west and that on the north, okay? North, west, that would put it in the northwest corner. It was erected upon a rock of 50 cubits in height. What do you know? Right behind me is an huge, incredibly huge rock that actually comes this, this entire corner here. Uh, it's just one massive rock. Traditional theory is looking pretty good. Well, if you go to Jerusalem today and say, hey, Mr. Tour Guide, tell me where this Roman fortress was. And they're gonna say, well, we don't know. Well, it was comprised of several cities. Do you have anything of it? No. This is, a, this is taken from a textbook that shows you what the Roman, that shows you what the temple looked like and the Roman fortress. So what they say is, well, this was the place of the temple and not a Roman fortress. This big square thing it was the place of the temple. So they paint in a temple there and say, that's where the temple is, up on the Temple Mount. Now we have the gold dome up there, right? They say, that's where it is. Well, where's the Roman fort? You see that red oval up there? That's what they say the Roman fort is. Josephus says it was comprised of several cities. Now, the size of the legion is 6,000 people with 4,000 support personnel. So over 10,000 people plus stuff shoved into a, a building uh, about half the size of this church. It's ridiculous. That's about what right there is about 80 feet wide by about 300 feet. The first thing you should know about the Antonia Fortress is that it is not a traditional Roman fort. It would, began and was constructed as a Jewish fortress manned by Jewish soldiers, later repurposed and renovated by Herod and renamed as the Antonia Fortress. And then when Rome came and had to guard the city of Jerusalem, they stationed a Roman garrison there. Now, there is a debate about the Greek word. Was it legion? Was it cohort? Legion is 6,000 men. Cohort is 600 men. The Antonia Fortress didn't, didn't build for, a, a, for example, for a legion, okay? It built for a unit to be, to protect, to look, to, to, to be there, but not more than that. If someone said the Antonia Fortress this is a place where we have the 10th legion, it's impossible because first we're talking about the Antonio fortress that built in the time of King Herod. When King Herod built the fortress, no 10th legion here. The 10th legion was in Brittany in that time. I know that the those that are putting forth the theory that it's down at the city of David, they say, oh, well, the Temple Mount was really the fortress Antonia. And they had, and they say there was a legion there. Actually, the word in Greek is identified as a cohort. A cohort is about 600 men at max, whereas a legion is 6,000. We have a much bigger problem, however. Are we looking for a location that can house 600 or 6,000 Roman soldiers, or are we looking for a location of the Jewish temple, of the second temple period, that can actually facilitate nearly three million pilgrims. How many people do we have that are in the temple? On a daily basis, we have the letter of Aristeas that says there were 700 priests. And it says it's not counting all of the individuals. So if you have 700 priests, you have 700 Levites, that's 1,400. How many worshipers do you have on a daily basis? Well, you're gonna go into the thousands, literally into the thousands but let's go to the festivals. We have the command for the people, they are to journey to Jerusalem for the festivals, right? Josephus records numbers for us. Now these numbers, he's going to list the number of lambs that were killed. This is in Jewish Wars, book six. He lists the numbers of lambs that were killed for one Passover and you have to multiply that by a minimum number of 10 uh, and a maximum number of 20. What you end up with coming to that particular Passover is over two million individuals. Now it's much more important that we have a large enough location for the Jewish temple that can host nearly three million Jewish pilgrims than it is to have a location that can uh, facilitate 600 or even 6,000 Roman soldiers.
in the old city of Jerusalem here. We're looking for a rooftop. We've got to get to the top to get an overlook of the traditional Temple Mount site. We've got some quotes we're going to read from uh, Josephus. Try the Austrian hospice. Check it out. Whoa, incredible. That's exactly what we're looking for. We're now on a rooftop overlooking what would have been traditionally the Antonia Fortress and then the Temple Mount down below. We're gonna read a few quotes from Josephus. We've gotta take it into account. Everybody talks about Josephus when it comes to this. So let's see what he says. Josephus says, And now Titus gave orders to his soldiers that were with him to dig up the foundations of the Tower of Antonia and make him a ready passage for his army to come up. Dig up the foundations. Okay, and let's take another quote real quick while we're at it. In the meantime, the rest of the army, Roman army, had in seven days' time overthrown foundations of the Tower of Antonia and had made ready a broad way to the temple. So twice here we have it. Antonia Fortress, the foundations being dug up by the Romans right here in Josephus. Well, if you go to Jerusalem today and say, hey, Mr. Tour Guide, tell me where this Roman fortress was. And they're gonna say, well, we don't know. Well, it was comprised of several cities. Do you have anything of it? No. So, here's the point. If the foundations of the Antonia indeed were dug up, why do we have a Temple Mount Plaza today, traditional site, remember? 35 acres, still foundations, still intact, okay? Here we go, another point from Josephus. For the Jews, by demolishing the Tower of Antonia, had made their temple four square, while at the same time, they had it written in their sacred oracles that then should their city be taken, as well as their holy house, then once their temple should become four square. What's this four square thing Joseph is talking about? Okay, if we wanna to go to the traditional site, it makes a lot of sense. Four square, Antonia, attached to the Temple Mount Plaza, right? Let's pull up a map and check the other location. Go down to the other side, mm, not so much. If we take away a supposed temple down in the city of David area, it doesn't really fit the script here. A four square, Temple Mount Plaza, once again, right? Made four square once Antonia is done away with. This fits the traditional theory right here. Antonia Fortress, northwest corner of the Temple Mount. Most of the sources, in fact, indicate that it was a northern side where what I call the Omaria School is, where you can see the sheared off cliff. If you're inside the Temple Mount and you look north, the cliff facing is sheared off. In other words, someone extended the Temple Mount area further north. And the archaeology, both from the British and later periods, indicate inside that there was building a, a, of, of, on a, of a base which could serve for a massive fortress which the, uh, that building served. We also have a major numbers problem. Even if we take the most conservative estimates of the size of the temple and the standard size of the cubit, which is between 18 and 22 inches, what temple experts uh, determine, somewhere between 18 and 22 inches, but even the smallest standard of a cubit at that time was 14 inches, okay? So it can't be smaller than 14 inches. Even if we take the most conservative numbers for the size of the temple and we move that into the city of David, for the temple to fit inside the city of David, much less the small area of the city of David where they think the temple location could have been, the cubit would have had to measure six inches. The entire city of David, it is a ridge of the slope of Mount Moriah, the lower slopes of Mount Moriah. It is the top of that ridge is only 14 acres. The Temple Mount is 35 acres. When Solomon first began to build it, it was a ridge. And what he did was he built platforms and he broadened the area to make an area large enough for the temple. How could you fit into this ridge with only 14 areas if you went from the bottom to the top and what they're saying is it's right above the Gihon Spring. 
What are we talking about in reality? We're talking about something in their version is the size of a large department store. You have to deny all the information about the temple. You have to deny everything we have in the Bible, everything that we have in the Jewish writings of the Mishnah, uh, in the Talmud, everything that we have there, everything that we have in Josephus, because Josephus, he, if you follow out what he's saying, he's describing a gigantic and enormous temple, not a little box. So as you guys saw, the theory that places the Antonia Fortress on the site of the traditional Jewish temple, Temple Mount, brings up a lot more questions than it does answers. Not only are we now looking for a place for nearly three million Jewish pilgrims to come worship in Jerusalem every year, we're also dealing with the fact that Josephus the historian very clearly states that the Antonia Fortress was destroyed. And on top of that, after everything we've learned, there's really no need to move the Antonia Fortress. The northwest corner there, fits it perfectly. There's no need to change from the traditional view. Guys, let us know what you think. Get the conversation going down in the comment section below. You're gonna wanna subscribe because part two of this series is coming up soon and that's where we're gonna deal with where did the Jewish temple get its water source? Coming up guys, make sure you tune out the fake news and tune into what is actually happening here in the land of Israel. We'll be back soon here at the Israel Guys. One of the biggest problems we run into by placing the Jewish temple on the Temple Mount, its traditional location, is a water issue. This is the Gion Springs. There's no running water anywhere except in the Gion Springs. The temple does not use the water from the Gion Springs.